Chaos theory is incredibly useful for gaining insights into how financial markets behave, but the term chaos often gets misused in the context of market technical analysis. It's also really easy to misunderstand chaos and what chaos is. Most importantly, it's not the same thing as randomness. I remember when I first came across the idea of chaos, and with some over simplistic thinking, I had somehow imagined that chaos and randomness were the same thing. But actually, they're quite different. So let's take a look and see what we'll cover here. First of all, we're going to look at what chaos is. We're going to examine how chaos works. We're going to think about what it means for market behavior. And we're also going to think about how this affects any sort of analysis that you might do on the market. Chaos theory is a really important tool for understanding market behavior. And from a technical analysis point of view, what it's really most useful for is for explaining unpredictability. It explains it in terms of nonlinear functions, which is a key idea of chaos theory. But it's often conflated with the concept of fractals. And while there is some connection between the two, they are not the same thing. Markets aren't really random, though. They're just unpredictable. Nonetheless, sometimes markets are approximated as random to allow the calculation of certain kinds of derivative contracts. Say, for example, to calculate options values by using assumptions that the market behaves like a random walk. So to say markets behave randomly is just an approximation that allows that kind of mathematical model to be applied. Chaos is different though, because for a given set of input parameters, we can actually calculate some future output. So chaotic systems aren't actually random. They're just effectively unpredictable. In order to understand how chaos works, let's create a very simple model of the market. The model works like a pendulum, where the pendulum represents investor sentiment on a stock price, and the straight line is the real value of the stock. As sentiment over and underestimates the stock value, there is a restoring force that brings it back to its true value, which is what you would expect from a rational market. Restoring forces in proportion to the separation between the pendulum and the true value. A system like this can be solved, and the solution is a periodically oscillating function. If I were to draw that function, it's going to look something like this. Of course, real markets don't look like this, though there are business cycles which can cause this sort of periodic fluctuation. But what needs to happen in order for the situation to become unpredictable? We can make the relationship between the pendulum and the true value of the stock more complex by adding more complicated dynamics to the system. Here we'll do this by adding another pendulum to the first pendulum. This effectively makes the relationship between the first pendulum's arm and the middle line no longer linear. The behavior now looks really crazy and consequently it probably appears quite unpredictable. But this is still technically predictable because, well, we're actually modeling it here. We see unpredictability when we try to analyze real chaotic systems. This is because the nonlinear nature of this system means that if the two double pendulums start closely together, even when they're almost imperceivably close, they very quickly start to behave very differently from each other. So very tiny differences between the two can lead to hugely different outcomes later on. This is often referred to as the butterfly effect, where supposedly a butterfly flapping its wings on one side of the world will make huge differences to the weather on the other side due to these tiny differences in the starting conditions that the flapping of the wings make. Likewise, if we were trying to make a mathematical model of financial markets, which relied on nonlinear equations, then the outcome of the real world and the model will diverge rapidly from each other because there will always be some uncertainty of approximation involved in representing reality. You can see this by looking at how closely these pendulums start here and yet how differently they end up swinging from each other. Therefore, chaos theory provides some explanation for why we should expect financial markets and economies generally to be inherently quite unpredictable, no matter how well we believe we can model them. So let's do what we did before and try and capture this motion in the x-axis to come up with some sort of function and see whether it's still periodic. So we can see here that now this function is, is much more crazy. 
and we can start to think about trying to use something like this as a model for a financial market. Take that drawing and flip it around and then imagine that we have a time axis across here and a price axis. This now starts to look like real financial market data. Of course, it doesn't quite look like this because this one has all the little spikes on the curve as it goes along in time. But we can smooth this out by taking a moving average. Then it starts to look much more like the fluctuations we saw from our chaotic system. Let's take a course plot of the Dow Jones Industrial Index and see if we can place our synthetic data on top of it. So when we do this, we see we actually get quite a nice match with a bit of scaling and stretching. And this almost looks like we've successfully modeled this index, even though that wasn't at all what we were trying to do. Obviously, the equations we used to make this model weren't based on market dynamics. Nonetheless, when you have two very similar systems, it's not unreasonable to try to use insights that you gain from one of them to understand the behavior of another very similar system. So what can we learn by observing that these two sets of data do have some kind of similarities here? What we know is that we can't predict what's going to happen up here. But what we can do perhaps is make very short term estimations of where this is going based on the observation that this function doesn't really change its direction all that often. So given that, we could say in the very short term, we might expect the market to go up. And likewise, we might also infer that perhaps given the momentum with which that index is rising, that it might also have a greater propensity to be going up as its next thing. But likewise, just like with the chaotic system where we can't really tell what's going to happen, we really don't know if the markets are going to keep going up, if it's going to somehow flatten off, or if it's just going to swing around and go back down again. So is that the end of this story? Well, no. Chaos theory is far too simple to describe real markets. The kind of dynamics that we're talking about here are the result of quite simple systems, which are controlled by only quite a small number of variables. That is definitely not the case for real markets. So where this is useful is for understanding where some of the unpredictability of financial markets comes from, but it doesn't explain all the behavior of financial markets. It's also important to realize that these chaos theory equations are still constrained by their own dynamics. And you can see this in the illustration here, that the arms of the pendulums are constrained to this particular area. So even though they make quite a crazy pattern, they're not completely random or can do completely crazy things like appear way over here. They're constrained to rotate around in this area and they can only move around in this area at a certain speed as well. And it's like that for financial markets. Financial markets likewise experience restoring forces so that if a stock price becomes far too overpriced or far too undervalued, there's always going to be sellers lining up to sell or buyers lining up to buy. So you can think of this as there being underlying dynamics which will always pull the pendulum back into more sensible positions. So chaos theory tells us how constrained systems can still behave unpredictably. And what that means is that in the short term, we might expect to be able to somewhat predict the trajectory of a variable in a chaotic system. And also in the long term, we know what it kind of looks like and what constrains the system and that there are restoring forces to bring the system back to, in the case of financial markets, the fair value for a stock or a commodity or whatever it is. So these systems are predictable, potentially in the short term and also the long term, but in that intermediate term, they're actually quite unpredictable.